I'm Peter Barnes, Head of Respiratory Medicine at Imperial College. Here we have a very large critical mass of researchers in respiratory medicine, probably the largest in the world, and we cover a whole range of respiratory diseases. At St Mary's Hospital we focus particularly on respiratory infections and we have a respiratory infection centre, we have a clinical respiratory trial centre and the MRC Asthma UK centre. Whereas at the Royal Brompton Hospital site we focus more on chronic respiratory diseases that include asthma and COPD which are extremely common and important diseases. So here we have a respiratory biomedical research unit funded by NIHR and we also have very close links with pharmaceutical companies and device companies. We established a spin-out company, Respivert, which has now been taken over by Johnson & Johnson and we're in phase two clinical trials with new inhaled drugs for the treatment of severe asthma and COPD. So we cover a whole range of diseases using many different approaches from epidemiology to cell and molecular biology through to clinical trials and clinical research. We were delighted to be the first recipients of a Wellcome Trust Joint Senior Investigator Award to fund our programme of research into the genetics and genomics not only of asthma but other respiratory diseases. The diseases that we're interested in, uh, in addition to asthma, are, are lung cancer and chronic bronchial infections. We apply high-level genomic tools in order to investigate these diseases, but most recently we've been interested in the microbiome. 10% of the human body is in fact human and 90% consists of the microbiome. This is bacteria, fungi, viruses. We showed a number of years ago that the healthy lung is in fact not sterile and therefore using molecular techniques we're investigating the microbial communities present in the healthy lung and the diseased lung. Traditionally the only way you could detect bacteria was by growing them uh, on culture plates. This is very difficult and slow and it only captures 5% of, of, of the bacteria that are in us and around us. So as an alternative we're using a far more direct approach where we take a, uh, say a throat swab, we extract the DNA from it uh, and we sequence the DNA and those, those DNA sequences tell us with enormous precision all about the numbers of different kinds of bacteria uh, that are on the swab and also it can tell us what they're doing uh, and what their weapons are. We were very lucky that the Wellcome Trust uh, gave us some funds to set up the Centre for Respiratory Infections in 2008, just before the 2009 influenza pandemic. And that allowed us to launch a big collaborative study with um, many uh, different investigators, 45 co-investigators, all focused on trying to work out why patients got so severely ill um, during flu. And from this, we've gone on to be able to feed our protocols and uh, data collection tools into two other major studies uh, funded by the Wellcome Trust and the European Union um, and adopted by the World Health Organization which will now allow data to be collected in a much more systematic way in future outbreaks. My interest is in the genetic disease cystic fibrosis in which patients are unable to defend their lungs leading to a life expectancy of only 38 years of age. The obvious answer is to do gene therapy and we're at a very exciting time now where we're undertaking the world's largest clinical trial here at the Brompton in which 120 patients, 60 of which are receiving a single dose of gene therapy once a month for a year and 60 are receiving placebo salt solution for the same, same time through a study funded through the National Institute of Health Research and we'll know the outcome of this by autumn 2014. Now it's impossible to do this sort of research without the right facilities and equipment and the National Institute for Health Research have funded a respiratory biomedical research unit which I am director. It's been a real privilege to watch the excellent scientists at Imperial College come together with the outstanding clinicians at the Brompton Hospital as well as on occasions through industry to begin to push forward more rapidly and more often these sort of clinical trials. It's a very exciting time to be here. 
So we have a very large critical mass of people in respiratory medicine covering the whole range of respiratory diseases using a multidisciplinary approach and because of this I think we are and will continue to be the major place to do respiratory research in the world.